What's up, everybody? Welcome to the R Lounge. Should I leave? Hello, everyone. This is my very first post in here, so please be gentle with me. I just want advice because honestly, at this point, I'm not sure how to handle anything in life. So my husband, 27, and I, 26, met in medical school. He was dating this girl of six years, and they were both a year above me. So I never really knew anything about them, nor was I friends with them. My husband and his ex were an on and off thing for these six years. She graduated on time, whereas he had an extra year, where we took classes together and started dating. A few months into dating, I found out that he had a secret Twitter account and posted something along the lines of, you will always be the one I loved, even though we're not together anymore. However, I was dumb and I let it go after a fight and he reassured me that nothing was going on between them. I loved him and I wanted to trust him. I figured it was a spare in the moment kind of thing and we never brought it up again. A few months later, he proposed and I said yes. I was excited, really happy. However, I knew his mom was not on board with me at first. This is because we both come from a different background, different culture, and even have slightly different beliefs. Once both families were both on board, we announced our engagement. The first red flag I experienced before we even got married was how disrespectful he was to me in front of other people. We went apartment hunting once and he called me stupid in front of other people for trying to point out things that we needed to look for in any apartment. The second red flag was when he pushed me to agree to live in that apartment. And the third red flag is that he lied to me about signing the contract already with that apartment complex so I wouldn't ask him to look for more apartments. I was so in love with him back then that I didn't realize those were big red flags. Of course, there were other red flags, like him wanting to spend more time with his friends than me, his fiance. However, let's get to the real problem. He is a huge mama's boy. He's the oldest son and they only have two sons. His parents have raised him to believe that they should always be his number one priority and that his blood related family should always come first, even before his wife. He believes it too, although he does not admit it. We fought several times about him always choosing his mother's side. For example, when we got to pick a wedding date and his mom wanted that specific date and he literally fought his way to get it. I'm honestly surprised at myself typing all of this because of how much BS I've accepted to let go of. As time went by, I realized that he tells his parents, his mother in specific, like everything, everything about us, about me, my secrets, secrets I've shared with him about my family and about our relationship. She knows about our fights, what I'm like as a wife and even our sexual activities. I was shocked. And that's not even the biggest part. They would both get together and discuss what his next move should be to try to teach me a lesson so I wouldn't fight over X again or act out. I was mortified when I found out. For example, he goes out with his friends, who are single still, on a daily basis. Literally on a daily basis. I've asked why to try to understand, complained to him multiple times, and started fighting about it lately. I just want to feel married. I'm not controlling, like he tries to make me sound. I just want to spend time with my partner. He could go out as much as he liked, but on a daily basis? Coming home at 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning, even on weekdays? I sleep at 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. most times, so I'm always asleep when he's home. I don't even get to hug, cuddle, or talk to him at night. It breaks my heart how detached he is from all of this. So anyways, back to the example. He would tell his mom that I was fighting to him about staying out all day and night, and she would tell him that he's the man and he could do whatever he wants, and would tell him not to let me speak to him that way next time. She would tell him things to do, and he'd apply every single advice he's gotten from her. Recently, I had a miscarriage. We were fighting before this miscarriage happened about a lot of things. One of them is about how he's giving his mother almost one-fifth of his salary when she doesn't need it because A, her husband works a really good job and makes a good amount of money, and B, we're in need for this money as we don't even own a house yet. And the fight wasn't even about me telling him to stop. It was more of him getting really angry at me for just suggesting that he thinks about whether this sum of money that he's paying to his mother could maybe instead be safe for us to buy a house with in the future especially since she doesn't even need it. He got really mad, threatened with divorce, swore at me, all the while I'm pregnant, then dropped me at my parents and left. I was crying, depressed, felt lonely. Shortly after, I started bleeding. I had a miscarriage about a week later. He was still mad at me, suggesting to think that his mother's money should be reduced, so he didn't even ask about me while I stayed with my parents for two weeks. I was depressed. I was sad. I was mad. I was preparing myself to leave him. Then he came back and apologized, said he'll change, that he's got nothing to share anything with his family anymore, that he's going to put me first. I believed him and wanted to give him another chance. 
although I wish I didn't because things only went downhill from there. His family started getting more involved. They're now pressuring him to make me cook and clean for him. Now I know a lot of wives do that, but no one is required to do that if it's not what they wanted. He knew before he even proposed to me that I never cooked my entire life. I clean here and there, and our apartment complex has a weekly cleaning service, so I'm not sure what else he wants. Before we got engaged, I told him in all honesty that I'm not going to be cooking or doing his laundry. I'm a doctor. I have my own calls, shifts, work, and life in general. He said he doesn't want me to cook or clean. They will figure it out together. But now he's demanding that basically I become his maid. The last straw was when I found out that he went on Reddit to like and comment on other girls' naked posts. I called his family crying, thinking that they'll stand by my side. Instead, his father yelled at me. He told me that it's not his problem, that his son is an adult and can do whatever he wanted, that it's probably my fault for always nagging on him, that I'm going to lose my husband and ruin my life, and that it's maybe best if we go through with a divorce because his son is suffering because of me. I was shocked. There I was crying. I had just found out that my husband is commenting on other girls, and then for his father to be blaming me, yelling at me, disrespecting me and my family, was a lot to handle. We fought, made up, the usual. At this point, I'm depressed. I can't stop crying. I want to leave the relationship. But no, that's not the end of it. I find out that he's still stalking his ex of six years. He's still not spending time with me. He's still not sharing any secrets. The sex life is almost always initiated by me. I confront him about stalking his ex. He denies it. Lies again. He doesn't know I have proof. He cried. We fought. We made up. I am tired of this relationship. I'm at a point where my mental health is getting affected. My work is getting affected. I'm crying all the time. I'm depressed. I want to leave, but I'm still holding on to the hope that he might change and go back to how he was before. I'm scared and I feel lonely. I came from a culture where it would be difficult for a divorced girl to date and marry someone else. Once divorced, not many guys would even look my way. Not that it matters. I know I need to get out of this abusive family, but I don't know how to let myself. I think I've been broken way too many times that it's just difficult to pick myself up and walk away. I'm scared. Please give me some advice on how to handle it all. Update. We are breaking up. No more toxic relationship. Hello everyone. For anyone that already knows my story, welcome back. For people that don't, please go back to my previous post. But to summarize things, I'm the doctor wife, 26, who's married to a doctor husband, 27. We've been having fights nonstop. Family-in-law getting involved and yelling at me. Him telling them everything. Left me during my miscarriage. Cheating, lying, no respect, nothing at all. He just wants me to be cooking for him, and I was scared to leave because, one, I loved him, and two, the culture. There is a huge update. I've listened to you all about how toxic my relationship is and how I need to find my self-worth and to just run. I do honestly love him so much because prior to marriage, and even up to the first few months of marriage, things were fine. They weren't amazing, I'll be honest, but he always promised to change. Well, he never changed. Except maybe to the worse. But that empty promise kept me going. I decided to talk to him one last chance to see if there's anything we could do to fix things. It was a last hope. I know, dumb me. What was I thinking? He'll never change. But I really was holding on to the hope that maybe things can be fixed. That maybe he loves me enough to fight for us. Well, many of you would be happy to hear it, but we're breaking up, despite me wanting to give this one last try. I approached him today, told him that there's so much going on, he's been treating me really badly, but that I love him, and if he really wants this to work, they will find a way to fix things but he'll have to really work hard on it. And his response? That he wants to consider divorce. That he'll never change and neither will I. That he found the post on Reddit somehow and read what I've shared to everyone on here and how betrayed he felt that I mentioned to complete strangers about our problems. He's mad that everyone is against him and his family. He's fuming and even asked me, how could you let them talk badly about me and my family? As if I've pointed a gun to each person's head to make the comments that they did. So he's moving out of our place while he thought about divorce and asked me to do the same. I didn't respond to him. I just told my parents about what happened and they jumped into protection mode. They're now on board with divorce 100%, even if he were to turn back and apologize. We drove to my apartment and packed everything into my dad's car. And off we went to my parents' house. You know what's funny though? When he read my post, he didn't even realize what he's done wrong. When he saw everyone commenting about how bad of a husband he is or how bad his family is, he didn't think once to doubt himself or his family. Simply, he got angry that now strangers know of our problems and that everyone's been supporting me to get a divorce. The irony though, he's been the one telling his family and friends about our problems and everything to do with us and me. But when I post about our problems to complete strangers that don't know him or I and never will, he gets mad. I mean, I get it. 
I may be in the wrong for posting about our problems. I don't mind admitting when I'm wrong, but he's done far worse things, such as telling everyone we know about our problems to begin with. Guess he got a little taste of his own medicine, and he really does not like it. Another thing, he was so willing to just drop me and walk away because A, I'm not cooking for him, and B, I'm constantly nagging him to change, and C, that I posted our problems for people who don't know us to see. But I couldn't walk away despite the cheating, lies, disrespect, etc. That's a hard slap in the face and a good wake-up call. Am I that petty and weak to allow him to walk all over me, but still be with him because I love him? But then with him, he's been waiting for any small excuse to just end things. It really is for the best. I've packed, I'm out, I'm completely done with him, now just as he is done with me, and even more. He probably won't, but even if he asks for me back, it's a hard no for me. I didn't know my self-worth all of this time, but I am learning my self-worth now. I deserve better, and I may be sad and it'll be difficult for a while, but I'll be happier without him in the long run. No more abuse. I should be free now. And I know I need to seek therapy. I will. I've been in too deep with this toxic relationship that I lost my self-worth, self-love, and self-care. A part of me didn't want to walk away because I thought I couldn't find better, because he fed me those lies. I was once this strong, independent woman, and he stripped me out of this role. However, I'll find myself again, I'll love myself again, and I'll focus on my life and work from now on. I may never find anyone to fall in love with again, especially because of my culture, but at least I'll have myself, my family, and my pride, and I'll never give up hope on finding someone who will treat me better. Thank you to everyone for supporting me, and for anyone that's going through a similar situation, I hear you. I know what it's like that I'm at the end of it. I know how it feels like to think you deserve what's happening to you, to think that you'll never find anyone. It's difficult to walk away from a whole marriage with someone you love, despite it being really toxic and abusive. But I'm going through it, and hopefully we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel, and so will you. It's difficult to think that abuse is abuse when it's going on for a long time and you start getting used to it. But I hope no one ever allows anyone to do this to them. It's not okay. Much love to everyone. Please reach out if you just want to make friends. I would really love to get my mind off things for a while. Thanks again, everyone. Update. Toxic marriage ending with lawsuit, husband, and possibly his family, in on possibly poisoning me to miscarry? Hello, everyone. I'm not sure if you remember me. I posted a few months ago about my toxic relationship. Just for a summary for any of you who can't remember, and you probably don't, it has been a while. I'm a doctor married to another doctor. We were in a really toxic relationship where my husband lied, cheated on me, caused emotional distress, to the point I miscarried, treated me like crap, gaslit me, etc. And I still stayed because... I was still in love with him and so attached to the hope that maybe one day we will go back to how things were in the beginning. Of course, we separated after that. We didn't even last a year of marriage. It has been three and a half months since we separated, but we are still legally married. Since detaching from the whole situation, I realized how much danger I was in while I was with him. Long story short, since separating, I'm beginning to put the pieces together. I don't have proof of anything, but just really big chunks of coincidences that happened during our relationship that leaves me with a question mark now. I was too blinded to see it then, but going through our text messages and old convos in my head, I'm starting to connect the dots. He knew I came from a somewhat wealthy family. He probably saw this as a plus to target me. He tried to get me to give him money for his business and for our future house that he wanted to be under his name only, to which I obviously refused to do. I didn't mind helping him out if he was in trouble, but I'm not going to take a $300,000 loan for him just for the house to be under his name. He tried several times to trick me, told me he'd have to sell his car that his family were in trouble and they could lose their house, etc., to get money out of me while we were married. As I mentioned before, things got worse when I got pregnant. I don't think he really wanted the baby. He started abusing me mentally. He'd never spend time with me. Our sex life was really bad. He didn't find me attractive anymore and made sure to make it known to me. But strangely enough, he would wake up earlier than me, make me breakfast, and made sure that I ate it. I was really confused at that point as to why he specifically focused on making me breakfast while I was sleeping. At first, I thought it was a really cute gesture. It showed that he cared. But what kept me confused is that he didn't care if I ate it all after that. He didn't care if I had lunch or dinner. Didn't care if I slept or not. He literally only cared about that act of making my breakfast. I had a first doctor's appointment as soon as I learned I was pregnant. I was only four weeks, one day pregnant, and all my blood investigations were normal. He didn't know I was pregnant then. I wanted to tell him after I confirmed my pregnancy with the doctor. Once I told him is when he started making me breakfast. Two weeks later, I went to the doctor again for another issue, and another blood test was done. This time, my liver function test was trending up. It was strange, but we didn't think much of it, and the doctor suggested I repeat it again in two weeks. Two weeks go by, and the liver function tests are going up even more. It was really strange. A few days after the doctor's appointment, I started bleeding. I had a threatened miscarriage. 
meaning that the baby's heartbeats were there. He was doing well, but I had a minimal bleeding. I was in and out of the hospital. During that time, he was getting really frustrated, angry, mad over the whole situation. I thought he was stressed about possibly losing the baby. Now, I'm not so sure. Anyway, I miscarried around week nine. He didn't care. I grieved alone, but I also didn't think it was a red flag. After that, he told me we should stop trying for a while. What's strange is that every time we had a pregnancy scare, he would do the exact same thing in the morning. Get up early, make me breakfast, make sure I ate it. At the same time, I was going to my doctor's appointments to follow the liver function tests. It went down after I miscarried and normalized. Then, we had that pregnancy scare, my liver function tests went up again. That same week, I discussed with him possibly trying again for a baby. We got in a fight, but he finally agreed that we should try. We try, and then from that day onwards, he's at it again with making me breakfast. Up to that point, it never even crossed my mind that he could be putting something in my food. That same month, my function tests were the highest they have been. Then, once I finally packed everything and moved out, the liver function tests have normalized and they have been normal ever since. Is this a coincidence? Maybe. Could it possibly be stress-induced transglutaminase? Well, there's not much literature on that, and I highly doubt it because there's no medical evidence that stress can affect the liver, but again, nothing's impossible. My biggest fear, however, is that he could have been putting something in that breakfast that I was eating. Am I crazy for even thinking that way? Maybe I'm overthinking. But again, we are talking about the man who tried to manipulate me into giving him all my money and taking a loan for him. The same man who did a big medical mistake for a patient on purpose because he didn't feel like operating on him. The same man who tricks people into doing business with him. I honestly never for a second doubted that he would do anything like that to me while I was living with him, but I was so blinded. Could it be that I am seeing things more clearly now? Or is my inner thought process trying to find a coping mechanism through doubting that he could possibly be poisoning me and my unborn child so he could get rid of him or her? We are going through a really ugly divorce battle right now. We are not in contact with each other, but our lawyers are, and it has been a war. We couldn't settle because he asked for everything, literally, and threatened to go to court. So we are going to court. It scares me how confident he is that he will be leaving court with more money than we tried to settle for, honestly, but I cannot even think of anything wrong that I have done except that I was stupid enough to text him during arguments, which could possibly be used against me, whereas he tried his best to never leave evidence of anything from day one. My mind's all over the place. I'm venting. I'm seeing what other people think of this situation. I'm so glad I'm out of that apartment, but I really just want my freedom back of being a single woman again and I'm willing to pay for it, just not with everything that he asked for. Especially when he's the one who lied, cheated, manipulated me, and mistreated me, and now possibly was the direct cause to the death of my unborn child. Please help me make sense of the whole situation. Thank you. Update. I got a divorce. No more toxic family. No more toxic husband. Hi. I highly suggest that you go over my previous posts for updates. At this point, I have been updating you guys throughout my journey to free myself from that toxic family. It all began with a simple post on here of my relationship with him and his family. And wow, I got to say that I got more support on here than anywhere else, including my family and friends. I was so down, lost, confused, scared to walk away, but you guys encouraged me to, and I am so glad you all did, so thank you for that. Before I get into the update, I will leave a little summary of the previous posts. I was married to my now ex-husband for less than one year. We met in medical school and got married soon after graduation. We're both doctors. He tricked me into thinking that he cared and loved me, but I realized soon after I married him that all he cared about was my family's money. Yeah, I come from a somewhat well-off family. He tried to get me to lend him money, take loans for him, etc. Just trying to basically milk me of my money for absolutely no reason. He's a doctor and has a side business and makes a ton of money. But he's so into money that he would do anything for it. As I noticed later on in our marriage, he was lying, manipulative, cheated, gaslit me, victim blamed me, etc. His family, on the other hand, were trying to pull me away from my family, disrespect me, mistreated me, etc. And he allowed for all of that to happen. His mom was an absolute nightmare to live with. She wanted to stay as the main woman in his life. He buys her flowers and showers her with gifts, but wouldn't get me anything if I asked for it. Last post I made was about the possibility of him poisoning me to get me to miscarry, to which I obviously miscarried. Anyhow, into the good news. I finally divorced. We got to settle with him, and I'm surprised that all it took for us to settle was me threatening him that I will get my hair and nails tested for any possible toxins that could have caused my miscarriage, like some of you suggested in the comments. He was so worried to the point that he agreed to settle right away. His only condition was that I drop the lawsuit against him and never file any other lawsuits against him. Hmm, fishy? I know a lot of you guys would jump to tell me to not sign the agreement to end the divorce and to go get tested and take it to court, etc. 
but this could take years and I cannot prove that he could have poisoned me, even if I had a toxicology report that there was something in my system. There is no direct link to him. I consulted with my lawyer and my lawyer told me that she is willing to do whatever I choose to do. I honestly just wanted to settle and close the chapter, especially since he in turn signed not to get any money from me and instead I was getting money from him. I honestly couldn't care less about the money and I'm thinking of donating it all to domestic violence survivors and shelters, etc. Basically women that were in the same spot as me but couldn't be lucky enough to leave before it's too late. I also know that his one true love is money, so it was really hitting him hard knowing that he'll have to pay me. We both signed the divorce papers and I feel like a weight has been lifted off of me. I do not want to be associated with him. I do not want to see him. I do not even want to remember the bad about him because I want to heal and move on. Yes, I'm dropping a lawsuit that I could have probably won and got justice for, but I chose what will be best for me now and for the long run. I can finally breathe. I feel a lot better. I'm a lot happier, even though it hasn't been 24 hours yet since we signed the papers. Still, I am glad to get rid of him. I believe karma will get him sooner or later for mistreating me and for being a cause of my miscarriage, whether that's directly through poisoning me or from putting me through hell living with him. I get to sleep tonight feeling a lot better that I got rid of him. Also, I was afraid of him finding this post, but I'm not afraid anymore. Actually, I hope that if he comes across it, he can read my post and let it all sink in. The very first post I made about him, which was anonymous, a long time ago and on another website, he was furious that people were attacking him and his mother and he couldn't get over it, ever. It felt like his forehead vein was going to pop. He couldn't take it that other people are against him and his mother. He tried to blame me for allowing other people to talk crap about him and his mother, but in reality, they were commenting on his and his mother's behavior. So really, I hope he finds my previous posts and can read it all, though I wish I could record his reaction and show it to you all. I bet it would go viral. <laughs> Jokes aside, thank you all for supporting me through it. I'm finally closing that chapter, and with that, this is most likely my last update on here. Our first response comes from Just No Anani. I'm glad you got away and saw through him, but please consider getting the talk stuff done and advising the police if the results come back shady. You survived. The next woman might not. This man should not be practicing medicine either. People like this start out small and it always goes further. Next thought from Spoodlat. I am so happy for you that you got your happy ending. And by happy ending, I mean that you are out of that toxic relationship and family. Chances are he did do something to cause the miscarriage, which is why he was so quick to settle. And I do not think it's ironic that he's giving you money. I think it's amazing that you want to donate to others in need. You have a huge heart and he is not worthy of it. And lastly, from Incognito Throwaway 1A. Just make sure that all credit agencies, banks, etc. have you two 100% severed. Despite being divorced, it's important to ensure that you are separate for those organizations. Ask your lawyer about this.